Pollinators are absolutely essential to food security throughout the world. They pollinate about a third of what we ultimately eat. As small a creature as they are, they're critical in the whole order of things to make this world turn. The George Mason University Honeybee Initiative involves all of the colleges and schools at the university and partnerships outside of the university to educate people about sustainable beekeeping and the importance of pollinators to our health. The multidisciplinary approach has been central to our success. It means that everybody at George Mason University owns the Honeybee Initiative. It highlights for us the importance of multiple disciplines solving grand challenges of our time. It's really important to bring multiple disciplines to bear on problems if you want to find the most creative solutions. I think there's something really important about the Honey Bee Initiative tying into George Mason University's mission of serving the community, of being responsible members of this community, and the Honey Bee Initiative models that by creating strong bonds with our community and by providing top-notch lesson plans and field trip experiences to anybody in the community who wants those. In 2021, we were awarded an NSF Future of Work planning grant. We used the grant to develop tools that we could deploy, specifically um, sensors that we could put in hives that would collect data on hive health and hive productivity. A smart hive is a, a beehive that has sensors that can track many things in the beehive. For example, the behavior of the bees, temperature, humidity, carbon dioxide, and the weight. And this helps determine how well the beehive is doing without the need for human intervention. For the pollen research, together with uh, HBI, we are interested in looking at how um, beehives use uh, plant resources across the season. So the data we're getting from the pollen, we're using pellets that are carried by the bees. By using barcoding, we can sequence the DNA that we extract. And then we sequence a gene or part of the plant genome called the barcoding gene. So with that sequence, and if you match that against a reference database, we can tell uh, what species are being used by the bee and in what proportion. One of the bases of creativity is cross-fertilization. And this is where this initiative and this uh, program is a wonderful example. What is going to happen if you put forensic scientists in contact with the Honeybee Initiative or a new program that aims at identifying clandestine graves to gather information that is going to be helpful to law enforcement, analyzing the um, area where the body is buried or abandoned, hints on how how the body has decomposed. The Honey Bee Initiative at Mason has been a source of inspiration and great collaboration for the uh, forensic department research, but also other bee-focused research at Mason. With the Honey Bee Initiative, we take community involvement very seriously. So we like having people out to view the hive. So, so we offer interactive learning experiences where we take students to the apiary, we open up a hive, we show them all the different things going on. And I think it's really important because you know, hands-on learning is a, it's a totally different way of learning than in the classroom. And you know, some students learn better in the field uh, when they're actually doing something, being involved, as opposed to sitting in the classroom. So I think it's a great way to get people engaged with science, with beekeeping, pollinators, and sustainability in general. One of the things that we discovered early on was bringing students out to a honeybee farm and seeing the bees up close and personal, that that experience, it felt like it really had an impact on students. But that could only go so far. There's only so many students that are going to be able to come to a, to a honeybee farm and experience that. At the Sweet Virginia Foundation, we thought, well, how can we take what's happening here on this small scale and make it possible for thousands of students around the region, around the country, and maybe ultimately around the world, have this experience? We've been thinking for at least the last five years, let's make a virtual reality field trip. It's not exactly the same thing as being there, of course, but it's the next best thing and it's possible. So I think the immersiveness that virtual reality provides is really unique. Before we have virtual reality experience, people could only imagine how a bee uh, would feel 
uh, inside the beehive and what is the surrounding. And with the 360 video that we captured, uh, people can get a, like a first-hand experience. You know, this is something totally unique. Experiential learning experiences are incredibly important. Uh, once I started working with the Honey Bee Initiative uh, with, with Lisa, Herman, Andrew, I, I felt this need to share this with my students. So I started by bringing my undergrad and graduate education students um, who take my science methods course. I started bringing um, students, elementary school age students, my own children. I wanted them to learn firsthand about the honeybees from, from these experts. What excites me most about the Honey Bee Initiative is its future in changing the way that people interact with the environment. I think we're doing that on campus by integrating pretty much every school and college in research and in teaching around pollinators um, and honeybees is not just about the bees. It's about climate change. It's about food security. It's about nutrition. It's about poverty and hunger and all of the other challenges that we face. The bees become a way of talking about other indicators of environmental health.